Hey, what's up guys, Phil here, and this is a review of the 2 Auto 2-in-1 Hot Air Rework Station at Soldering Iron, model number DS882V2. Today's sponsor, fast to buy sent me this complimentary unit for my unbiased review. Don't forget to check out their upcoming Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales for big savings on this soldering station and other cool DIY and hobby tools. You'll receive a control unit with attached soldering iron and hot air rework tool, magnetic rework holder, two nozzle tips, five additional soldering tips, solder sucker, a tube of soldering tin, tweezers, three foot power cable, and an instruction manual. The soldering station consists of two main parts, a metal solder stand with brass wool and cleaning sponge, and the soldering iron and rework tool attached to the control unit. The only assembly required is to attach the rework handle holder here. Just remove these two screws and set them aside. Then place the rework holder on that side and line up the holes in the bracket with the holes where the screws were located. Then reattach the screws. This holder is magnetic and will securely hold the rework tool when placed in it. You can use the rework tool as is, or attach one of the nozzles for a more precise and directed airflow with a 6.5 or 4mm diameter. To install the nozzles, just slide one over the end and tighten the screw at the collar until it is secure. The extra tips you'll receive are a knife tip, chisel, beveled, wide, and fine conical tips and you can store four of them on the back of the soldering iron stand. To change the soldering iron tip, just unscrew the metal tube and remove the current tip which exposes the ceramic heating element. Just be careful not to damage it. Then slide the new tip over the heating element and replace and tighten the tube. There is about 12 grams of tin in the included dispensing tube, though it's unclear what its exact composition is. The control unit has a 2 and 3 quarter inch diagonal LCD, soldering button on the left, rework button on the right, menu, up, down, and back keys, and three shortcut keys in the middle. On the back of the machine, you'll find the power rocker switch, fuse, and power port for the power cable. After plugging the unit in and turning it on, the LCD will display standby for both the soldering iron and the rework tool. Pressing the gear button on the left opens the menu selection. Pressing the gear icon again lets you modify this setting, and you can increase or decrease it by pressing the up or down keys. Holding a button will change the numbers more quickly. Option 1 sets the soldering iron's temperature from 150 to 450 degrees Celsius, or 302 to 842 degrees Fahrenheit. Menu option 2 is for setting a temperature offset by up to plus or minus 50 degrees Celsius. So say you've set the soldering iron to 300 degrees Celsius, but you find that it's actually heating up to 315 degrees. You'd want to set the offset by minus 15 degrees Celsius to compensate in order to get the temperature at the iron tip to match the setting on the screen. Option 3 is the setting for the soldering iron sleep timeout, which can be set in 10 minute increments up to an hour or turned off, which I don't recommend, so I'll leave it at 10 minutes. Similarly, menus 4 through 7 allow you to adjust the temperature of the rework tool from 100 to 500 degrees Celsius, the amount of airflow from F1 to F17, the temperature offset for the rework tool, again up to plus or minus 50 degrees Celsius, and sleep timeout when the tool is placed in the holder, from 0 to 10 minutes. Option 8 is for the temperature unit's selection, Celsius or Fahrenheit. And option 9 is for setting a 3-digit password to lock and unlock the heating functions for safety. To set a password, you must enter the same 3-digit code twice. Then in order to access any of the functions, you'll need to enter this code first. To remove the password, go to menu option 9 and enter your code, then wait for the setting to time out without setting a new code. Now to turn on the soldering iron, press and hold the soldering button for one second. You'll see the current temperature in the middle of the screen start rising rapidly, with the target temperature in the bottom left. If the soldering iron stays in the holder for longer than your sleep timeout, you'll see a moon and star icon on the LCD, and the current temperature will be blank. To wake the iron from this state, simply pick it up and give it a quick shake, and it'll heat up to your selected temperature again. 
Alright, let's try soldering some stuff. I'm going to set my soldering iron to 350 degrees Celsius and let it come up to temperature. You'll want to pre-tin your soldering tip and work in a well-ventilated room or with a fan to draw away any fumes. Now I'll carefully feed soldering tin onto the two wires that I want to join together. You can see that the soldering tip transfers the heat to the wires quickly, allowing the tin to flow freely. So I don't need to keep the iron in contact with my components for a long time and risk damaging them. I'm going to wipe off any excess flux first, then slide heat shrink wrap over the connection. After use, remember to clean your tool's tooltip by lightly pushing it into the cleaning wool a couple times, and wiping the tip on a wet sponge until the tip is free of solder and flux. I'm going to turn the soldering iron off for now by long pressing the soldering button, since I'm going to switch over to using the rework tool. Let's set its temperature to 125 degrees Celsius, and keep the flow at the max setting F17. I'm going to set the sleep timeout to zero so that the air will shut off as soon as I place the tool in its cradle. Then press and hold the rework button to turn it on. You can see that sometimes it overshoots the temperature a little, but then adjusts and comes back down to the temperature you set. With the nozzle on the tip, I can direct the hot airflow right at my heat shrink tubing without blasting a whole bunch of other components with heat. Then when I place the tool in its cradle, it goes to sleep right away. But be careful because the tip will still be hot. When you pick up the tool, it will heat up again and be ready to go in a few seconds. To shut off the tool completely, press and hold the rework button for one second. If you have settings that you use a lot, you can save up to three profiles in the three shortcut keys. Just press and hold the channel one, two, or three keys and make your selections. Then when you want to use them, press the button you save those settings to and they'll be loaded with one touch. The solder sucker is used to remove solder from existing joints. To use the solder sucker, press the plunger down at the end, place the white tip over melted solder at a joint, and press the black release button to create suction that will remove the solder. But work quickly as the solder will re-solidify if you're too slow. To demonstrate, I'll pre-tin this existing joint. Then heat up the solder until it is liquid. Quickly cover the solder with the tool tip and press the release button. And most of the solder on that joint has been removed. Overall, I really enjoyed the soldering station's ease of use and ability to set accurate temperatures at the touch of a button. The tools both heat up quickly and allow me to solder, desolder, and apply hot air where I need it. The temperature ranges are broad and can be calibrated using the offset compensation feature, and the handles of the tools don't get hot during operation. There's hardly any setup involved, and you can get started soldering out of the box with the included tube of tin. I hope you enjoyed this review. You can ask me any questions in the comments. I'll put a link to the product in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and join me next time.